One of those rare horror stories where the horror wasn't really caused by anyone at the table. A year ago, I hosted, but didn't Game Master, a game between some old friends. We had met around high school age, but this was the first time we'd seen each other for four years. That much time changes people, and the group started having some friction a few sessions in. Conflicting views cropped up, and some of the less mature players kept messing with the more mature ones. One of our players is Eric, and today he was carpooling with Ace and Rio, who are engaged. On the ride over, Eric had gone full frat boy towards Ace, making Rio uncomfortable. He and Ace were friends in college, and used to party together and have some escapades. Eric thought going back to those stories in front of Ace's fiance was a good idea. The game started when they arrived, and nobody's mood got any better. GM caught us up to speed on our last adventure, in Shadowrun, Seattle, and what they had planned was just some downtime and smaller stakes action. Eric and Ace's characters roomed up together in an apartment, and so when Ace wanted to do a short RP sequence of tracking down an arms dealer, Eric forced himself in to tag along. While negotiating a price, Ace managed to drop it a bit, but not to what he was hoping for. So Eric decided to give it a try. Critical Glitch To the more D&D oriented people, think of a critical glitch as a super ultra very bad no good mega natural one. The dealer was offended by such a lowball offer, GM narrates. She brings the price down to what it was originally. This is where Ace snaps and stood up from his seat. He voiced a lot of his frustrations about Eric and a few other people in the group, which really weren't all that unfounded. There were things I didn't even realize were bothering him until he said them out loud. The rest of the table screeched their chairs to get up too. And now all of a sudden, I've got a shouting match around my dinner table. Suddenly, I heard a crash and some breaking glass. The table went silent, thinking someone threw a beer, till someone pointed out the hole in the drywall. Someone down the road had shot a gun, and by pure luck it didn't hit anyone. The one who had it the worst was my cat, who had to put up with the shouting and the gunshot. That near-death experience did calm everyone down though. A week later, a few of us agreed that maybe it was time to put some distance between old friends again and separate on good terms. TLDR, I dodged a literal stray bullet and it ended up stopping our shouting fight from turning into a real fight. Sounds like you dodged two bullets, OP. I think the Cosmos were trying to tell you something about this game, but at least now you have a reputation as a bullet dodger. Why do they call him the bullet dodger? Because he does his bullets heavy. Now let's slide out of cover and vault into our next story. Problem players and an inability to separate their characters from themselves. Name a more iconic duo. And unfortunately for this group, this kind of problem player decides to pursue a relationship with this poster's wife, both in and out of game. So let's gather up a murder and see how this plays out. So this happened quite recently, and I'd figured I'd share my own horror story. I'm part of a 5th edition homebrew campaign, and I play with my wife. There are five of us, not including the DM, but the only two characters relevant to this are my darling wife, who plays an elven wizard, and the problem player, Mark from here on out, who plays a tiefling bard. So, my wife and I have a rule that we are fine with our characters romancing other characters. We don't want to be the couple who only roleplays romance with one another. This is important because of Mark. His character immediately took a shine to my wife's, and he flirted at her regularly. Now, he flirted with most of us and most of the NPCs, so we didn't think anything of it. And she even flirted back on occasion, poorly, as her charisma was abysmal. We'd been playing at this campaign for about a year at this point, and in game, my wife's character and the problem players had started a romance. Nothing intense, but it was clear in game that they were romantically involved. I didn't care about this at all, because it's just a game. Unfortunately, Mark didn't see it this way. My wife and I acted like a normal couple when we went to these games. We were engaged, 
and newly married for most of the campaign, and it was time we enjoyed. We weren't massive on the public displays of affection, but we'd hold hands, sit next to one another, she'd rest her head on my shoulder, and stuff like this. Well, one day Mark pulled me aside and told me I needed to back off from my wife? I was confused, and said what did he mean back off? She's my wife, and she instigated most of the physical contact. I apologized if he was uncomfortable and we'd be more discreet. He then explained that no, it wasn't that he got uncomfortable seeing public affection, it's just that in here, she wasn't my wife. She was his character's lover. I just looked at him like he had two heads. I won't repeat exactly what I said, but I ripped him a new one, and he immediately told the DM and my wife what he'd said. My wife was furious, and said that he was ridiculous to think that she'd care more about an in-game relationship over her real-life husband. The DM wrapped up the session after that. My wife made it clear she wasn't willing to play with Mark anymore, and I agreed. We told the DM we'd be leaving, though he said Mark had been booted from the group and we were welcome to stay. Given the campaign didn't have any overarching storyline, we started a new campaign. He was willing to start fresh, so we stayed with the group and started a new campaign. We still enjoy our D&D nights, though they are less common now, and have since revised our rule. In-game romances are fine, but only with sane players. Yeah, back off your wife, bro. Can't you see she's with a real man? A real, fake, elven man? Uh, yeah, no advice here. This player is delusional. He needs the morning lord or therapy, whichever gets to him sooner. I also fought the overwhelming urge to read every instance of my wife in a Borat voice, so you should thank me for that. Let's move on. Cutscenes. A brief pause in the action to have a cinematic moment in a game. Sometimes beautiful and atmospheric, and sometimes unnecessarily long, complicated, and spends an hour discussing your relationship to metaphysical reality after you spent the last five minutes doing naked cartwheels to knock out guards. Technically, this entire rant I'm going on right now is like a cutscene until the next story. Please don't skip it though, I need the ad revenue. A story which is about, you guessed it, cutscenes. And so without further ado, Let's mash the skip button until you break your keyboard, as we keep the murder going and dive into this next story. My friends and I have been playing a 5e campaign for about one year together. I created a character for this campaign where I fleshed out his personality more thoroughly than I had with any previous character. He got to develop over the course of the story, and the other players responded to him well. My wife and I learned that we were expecting a baby, not our first, and I told the group that I would need to take a break from the game after the baby was born for the adjustment period. A couple weeks later, the DM sends me a text stating that he's considering killing off my character in an upcoming session. I responded, asking that my character not be killed off, and suggested he spend time at his god's temple or something. I never got a response. Fast forward a couple months. It's one month from the due date, and our session is a big siege-type attack. We play for several hours until the city is taken. Once the battle is ended, the DM introduces a brand new BBEG, who suddenly appears right next to my character. The DM makes a die roll, never clarifying why they are rolling, behind the screen, and announces that the BBEG just killed my character. No damage announced just that my character was immediately dead. The DM declared to the group that he had planned this with me. The group was shocked, and I didn't want to kill the momentum with an argument, so I didn't speak up. The more I thought about it, the more it bothered me. I talked with another player and showed the text exchange. This validated my frustration. It's been three months since the birth of a healthy daughter. We've started a Starfinder campaign with the same DM but his poor communication is really hampering my enjoyment. Other issues are also present. For example, railroading the story, little or no description of locations, blaming players for any misunderstandings of the world, outright refusal to have a session zero, etc. Thinking of leaving the game altogether. I think that's the right call. Clearly this dungeon master doesn't care about what you're comfortable with and it generally doesn't seem like they really care about your agency at all. 
As a DM, you have to facilitate situations that allow your players to make choices, even if those choices don't match exactly what you imagined for your story. It is not your story. It's ours. This is a game, not a screenplay. And all this DM ended up doing was giving his players the Netflix adaptation of his game. Let's forget about this DM like we forgot about the live-action Death Note movie as we move on to the next story. Warhammer. Home to horrible, smelly, evil, disgusting monsters that feast like carrion on the remains of a rotting empire to the encore of fiendish gods. But enough about Warhammer fans. The setting is also home to really cool, expansive lore, talented cosplayers and miniature painters, and amazing video games. I mean, except for 40k, which seems to keep getting a bunch of gotcha phone games that want to drill holes in your wallet in exchange for shitty loot boxes. But unfortunately, as mentioned previously, despite all the cool things about Warhammer, it seems to attract some of the worst human beings to ever crawl out of the depths of Nurgle's domain. For an example of what I'm talking about, look no further than the player in this next story. Content warning for mentions of sexual assault. In early 2021, I had joined a Warhammer fantasy game module called Enemy Within. Enemy Within is a very long, very difficult campaign, and I was excited to finally find a dedicated group who would want to run it on Sunday nights, because at that time, that's the only time I could do. I had decided to play a Bretonian thief, and then later promote into a spy named Nanette. Nanette had taken a lot of inspiration from Safana from Baldur's Gate. But of course, to a low degree that is tolerable, such as instead of being overly sensuous, she would be confident in her beauty, value treasure, and maintain her beauty. Personally, Safana is my favorite character because of her confidence, and has been inspiring to me for at least 10 years. Instead of being sensual, I would have Nanette admire her own beauty and care about her appearance as well as regale with tall tales of exploits and lovers. The party. Nanette. Me. Vain Bretonian jewel thief. Masha. Male player offended by feminine expression, played a female Kislevian knight who believes that women should be tomboys in tabletop. Jory. GM who was weirded out by Masha's picking on me as well. Fabienne, Tilean Scout, also a subject of Masha's ire. Before I had joined, I had scrolled up and seen that Masha had said he didn't want me to join as he felt two women in the party would be awkward because he felt that it would ruin the aesthetic. What aesthetic? Women are not for aesthetic purposes, is what I wanted to say, but instead I created my character. Everything was fine and I generally avoided Masha until session two when we had formally met Fabian. Fabian had asked, thankfully, to kiss my hand, jokingly admiring the beauty my character constantly speaks of. We all laugh at the table before Masha rudely interjects and says, Are you whoring yourself out to this stranger? We have work to do. Before I even had a chance to say yes or no to the offer. Everyone just kind of went quiet before I just ignored him and told Fabian no. After the session, the GM had pulled Masha aside, scolding him for next week against my wishes. Apparently, Jory has a zero-tolerance policy for in-game and out-of-character sexism towards another player, which I didn't know about. Masha had seemingly changed and had since apologized until we had reached Altdorf. After fighting a bright wizard, Nanette's hair had become slightly charred by Jory's description. And then jokingly, I had her decide to use her own money to purchase a hairbrush and then take a hot bath. After I told the party my intent in our downtime in Altdorf, Masha has an absolute meltdown. Why are you portraying women like that? No girl is like that. And the girls that are usually die in Warhammer or are raped to death. To which, massaging my temples, I respond. How are you going to tell me how to portray a woman as a man? The GM then muted Masha and then kicked him from the game and Discord, apologizing profusely before he ends the session there for the week. Masha, not done with the drama, joined the Discord with an alt alongside two others and decided to spam me calling me fat, whore, and ugly. 
I had found it mildly amusing, posting screenshots I had taken of Masha's previous rantings about how he wants to be the only woman, before he is kicked. I will never understand how a man can tell a woman how she should act, should behave in a roleplay setting, and what their core principles should be. Masha, if you're reading this, just know that not every girl wants to swing a sword, drink beer, act snarky, or roleplay being a lesbian like you. As for the game, we're still going strong. I was the one who suggested we post this, just so I can vent this out of my system. Now, whenever we meet a female NPC, there's always a slight bit of laughter because we know it would make Masha furious. TLDR. Male player hates confident female player who doesn't buy into his tomboy values in Warhammer. Says my character would be raped to death and then goes berserk after being kicked. Props to Jory the DM for catching on immediately and just booting the guy when he needed to. That kind of perception and immediate action makes him the MVP of this story. And while I can wish you luck against the enemies within, it sounds like your party's in good hands. You have my blessing to continue having spa days in Warhammer, if not for yourself, but just to make Masha see. Lots of stories today. And if you enjoyed today's stories, please be sure to leave a like on today's video and subscribe to the channel. And hey, why not leave a comment and boost my engagement? Can't think of a comment? Then leave the comment, Enemy Within, so I know that you made it to the end of today's video. But if you'd like to further support the channel, then why not join the bird aristocracy over on Patreon? And join patrons like our Counts of Quills, patrons like Sharkay, Kirito Kazuto, Critical Kunik, Evix, King Drazil, Christian Pip, Cosmosis, Rikus, Vincent, Haley Thompson, Zero Fang, and Netscape Navigator. Or you can join the Barons of Beaks, like Mr. Hypocritical, Javon Megan, Jesse Shodell, Kuntos Weasel, Moet is Mao, Chunky Salsa, Tech Blog, Currister, Cardispawn, Amadis Pastry, Jester King, Gentle, Lord Rend, Gibber Woods, Wormy, Den of the Drake, Mickey Eatley, and Anya. But of course you could go further and become a Duke of Feathers, like the school bus, Mirage Vaxus, Shiro Tatsuma, Quinn, the Forgotten Druid, Jared Sewer, Blues Otters, Jared Zemlin, General Constantine Chase, Doc Salty 96, Matthew Mulqueeny, and Acroth. And with all of that out of the way, I'll see you next time, as the crow flies.